is so fetch. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Kaya, and today we are going to be listening to Pantera, and I am honestly so excited for this. This is our poll winner from last week uh, by a whopping 53%. Y'all really wanted to listen to Pantera, so that is what we're doing today. I got eight songs for us. Y'all suggested so many great ones, and I'm very, very excited. I actually told my mom about this band and that it won, and she was like, oh yeah, I remember seeing Pantera in the 80s. So I'm very excited um, just from listing out the songs. I did it in order for us today. So um, we'll be listening to their discography in order. The eight songs, they're all from, most of them are from different albums. There's a couple repeats, but uh, yeah, from what I know, they're from the 80s. Started in 1981. Uh, they're from Arlington, Texas. So I was raised in Texas, so I'm very interested and excited to hear what a Texas metal band sounds like. Um, and uh, what's interesting is that none of the songs that we're listening to today are from any of the albums from the 80s. So uh, you'll have to let me know about what, what the sitch is with that. Is the music just like meh in, in, in the 80s? Or is it like, you know, meh and then like the 90s came and they, they got it? So, you know, that, that sometimes happens. Like, the Red Hot Chili Peppers is kind of like that. It's like, some of their earlier albums are questionable, and then, you know, Stadium Arcadium came out and changed the whole game. If you want to subscribe to the channel, please feel free to do so. I post weekly videos. You can also like this video, share with a friend, and let me know in the comments stuff about Pantera. I don't know too much, okay? I really don't know too, too much. I like to come into these reactions completely blind and have y'all educate me on the world of metal. This is how it works, you know? Y'all have been amazing, and I'm so, so grateful for each and every single one of you. So, uh, without further ado, let's listen to some Pantera. <laughs> so, I'm very interested to hear what their 80s sound is. Um, y'all picked all songs from their 90s to 2000, the year 2000, records from there. Um, but you picked a lot of songs off of this first record that we're going to hear, which is called Cowboys from Hell. And I'm very excited about this because this is like right up my alley, okay? This old southern girl, and uh, I like, I like this. This sounds like it's something I, I need in my life and I'm very excited. Um, so Domination is going to be the first song that we hear. So let's get into it. Ooh. Whoa! Where are they playing at? Wow, they're thrashing around so much. I gotta see me this in bigger view. Hold on. The drum sounds so good. Wow. Ooh. Oh my god, look at that hair flip. Oh my gosh. Ooh, he's got something like shaved into his head. Or is that like tattooed? I'm getting like some Rage Against the Machine vibes. It's so like 90s punk. <laughs> Oh. Oh. That lady did not seem pleased at all. Did you see that? She looked absolutely, uh, totally not excited to be there. Not excited at all. The chorus sounds very nice. I really liked the transition into it. Nice solid chords. Oh. oh, I like those like surfing he's doing. This is my favorite part. Oh. It's definitely got an old school vibe to it for sure. I love this part too. Ooh. Oh yeah. Ooh. Their stops are clean. And 
and it's super 80s. You know, 1990s, just because it's in the 90s doesn't mean that they don't lose that sort of like 80s sort of drum style and just the 80s sound. I like it. I do like it. It's, uh, it's definitely not as heavy as I thought it would be, but that's okay. They have a lot of energy, and I feel like there's a lot of, like, hair and a lot of, like, shirtlessness. And where did they film this? Fun fact, you can't go back to the studio version after listening to this. They mic'd his drums up really nicely, and I, I think the drummer, yeah, he's got, like, this fake brick sort of, like vinyl or whatever on his drums which is kind of cool uh honestly like if this is a live like live recording like this is the audio from the live show it's very nicely recorded like the drums sound really good there's a lot of like live albums like Miley Cyrus just released a live album and you know this isn't the channel for Miley reactions anymore but let me tell you, it was trash. I'll be the first one to say it. I used to be a big smiler and it was trash. Her voice sounds awful and uh, this sounds really good. I digress. Let's continue. Oh, give me that guitar solo, please. Wow. Ooh. What kind of guitar is that? Wow, look at him go. Wow. Ooh. I like the, like... You've gotta be shitting out my nutsack. Hold on one second. That was so cool. Holy crap. Just that whammy of a solo, and then we're getting into this breakdown. I have to re-listen to that. Hold on one second. Give me this damn solo one more time. Wow, this breakdown. This is slapping. Holy shit balls. Wow. Dude, I could totally see myself just vibe into this in the summertime. It's been getting warmer here in North Carolina and I have been blasting the metal. Y'all would be so proud of me. I still get time for my Ariana, but I'm telling you, metal's been making it into the summer playlist, boo, and uh, it's pretty wild. People don't expect me, <laughs> they don't expect me to be listening to uh, <laughs> Death and Morbid Angel blasting down the street. <laughs> Let's listen to this, hold on. I love that the crowd is like chanting. Oh, give me more solo, please. Holy crap. What are you playing? What is that guitar? Where is this show? It doesn't look like ACL. It doesn't look like ACL. No, that's way too much space for ACL. If you know where they performed, will you please let me know? Thank you. <laughs> I'm very curious. That is a lot of space. That doesn't even look like people. That just looks like a bush. <laughs> That's how many people th that are there. All right. Domination. Um, I'll have to listen to the actual like studio version and compare. Because this person says that the live version is better than the studio version. And 10,000 people liked that comment on this video. So I'm going to have to listen to the studio version. Um, I'll be honest and say it kind of started slow, uh, in my personal opinion, but that guitar solo leading into like the breakdown, mm. Mm. I'll just have to give it another listen and listen to like the studio version. Um, because I did like what was going on in the drums and I liked their energy and I really, really liked the guitar tone and the solo that he gave. 
Let me just peek at these lyrics real quick. Y'all already know. Let's go to our friend Genius. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? First take like a motherfucker. That's your intro? What's that for? Let's click on it. Hold on. Due to the song's technical complexity, drummer Vinnie Paul Abbott. Rats are eating something crunchy. What are y'all doing in there? Coda, leave the damn rats alone. You got rats eating peanuts. You got Coda eating whatever they're dropping from their crate. It's like a madhouse in here. Uh, due to the song's technical complexity, drummer Vinnie Paul Abbott unabashedly shouts that he will lay down his drum track on the first take like a motherfucker. Ooh. <coughs> is that from the live rec that's from the when he's in the studio this line is often purported as fart stinks like a motherfucker which is incorrect tell your friends okay what am i missing as far as like song technical complexity um like what's the sitch domination consumes you then calls you a friend as a twisted fall binds her like steel and manipulates the will to be it's domination pushed into living hell. Domination. And now Black Tart is reaching out in divinity. Body suspended by chains over razors and nails. Oh, it's a penalty. Hmm. Why is it that genius never has <sighs> comments on metal songs? Very rarely do we have enough info for me to go off of. Okay, here's some comments from people. Don't headbang challenge, cheats enabled. Oh, Vinny Paul died, rest in peace. That breakdown smacks though, yeah, it does. The perfect soundtrack for house demolition. Um, ooh, okay, you're gonna have to let me know more information. We're gonna move on for now. Okay. For visuals, I'm going to pick the official music video for Cemetery Gates, but I'll let you know what I think about the seven minute version. Ooh. Ooh. Wow, those drums. Oh, they're so old school. Wow. Wow. Oh my god, the voice he's got. I was not expecting him to be able to, like, I... This is like real singing. This is like holding a tone. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm getting like, um... In terms of like overall sound, a lot of um, Guns N' Roses, sort of. I mean, it's 80s, so I'm kind of getting like Guns N' Roses. Kind of Nirvana sound. Wow. Oh, harmonies. Oh my god, the guitar is singing. This is so 80s, 90s. What is this hair situation? We have to talk about this real quick, though. The hell is that on your face it's not even on your face it's not even a neck beard that is just a chin beard that is just cupping your chin that looks so weird it looks like you ate something oh shave your damn chin boy what you doing oh you even shaved like it's not, oh, he shaved like here. The frick is that? If you tried to wear that today, you'd probably get shanked, Bubba. I do like his glasses though. There's so much hair and shirtlessness and like, it's so 80s and yet 90s and it's just, the singer's got a really good voice. 
very good voice. I was not expecting like how different this is compared to everything that we've listened to on this channel. Um, it's definitely different. But it's it's more of what like I'm used to because I listen to a lot of like 80s rock and roll. The 80s was a great era, great decade for music. <laughs> and I listened to a lot of like Joan Jett, Cyndi Lauper, uh, Guns N' Roses, Depeche Mode, New Order especially. Um, there was just so many great bands that came out of there. Um, and uh, this is kind of like in my realm. This is like what the old me would have listened to. You know, the old me pre-metalhead, you know? So, um... You know, I just have to remember that, like, it's not all, like, gutturals and high-pitched screams and stuff like that, because the 80s were, was a different time. Death was special. Morbid Angel was special. But, uh, Death was on another level, okay? Death was on another level. They just were, like, literally, I don't even know, I don't even know how they... No wonder people didn't really listen to their music back then because they were like, what the frick is this? <laughs> it's all this screaming and yelling and goblin noises. Um, so I have to remember, this is a different time. The 80s didn't have too much screamy goblin noises, or maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I have something sticky on my leg and I don't know what it is. Is that lotion? What is that? The frick is that? Where are we going? Oh. Oh. Oh, this guitar solo, though. Wow. That was super nice. Okay, two things. I love a delicious guitar solo where, like, you feel something, you know, where it's like they're telling a story with their guitar solo. Mm. This has some heart to it. This has some like, almost like a mourning. And I, that seems to be the message. Cemetery Gates, he's talking about, you know, this person that's left him. Um, and yeah, you feel like this mourning in the guitar. Also, I love that the like drums kind of stopped for a beat in the middle of the solo and kind of gave the guitar just like a little like one or two beats to like breathe and then it came back. Ooh. Very Guns N' Roses. Yeah, how can you not like headbang to these songs? Ooh. That's so catchy. What is the shovel for? Oh, digging. Wow. Oh. Oh, that's kind of a nice call and response between the lead vocals and the guitar. How he did like this, ah, like high note. I'm not going to do it because my voice hurts. <laughs> and then the guitar kind of did it too. It was like, Bang. well, it definitely did it. it went Bang. like all the way up there. Delicious. Delicious. Oh, Axl Rose in the house. Wow, he's going really high up there. I'm just let that shit ring out too. That sounds amazing. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Vinny Paul. Oh wow, he just died in 2018. Dimebag Daryl, 2004. Wow, he died really young at 38. I'm just reading one of the YouTube comments. What is Pantera like considered? Groovy metal, thrash metal, heavy metal. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but from what y'all have told me, you said that thrash metal was more of like an older style like old school genre of metal um you put like anthrax in there i think slayer was in there 
and I think Metallica was also like one of the godfathers of it. I've never listened to Metallica. I would be down to do a video. Song has become a eulogy of sorts in celebration of the life of the band's former guitarist Dimebag Daryl, who was savagely murdered on stage in a nightclub. I was wondering why he died so early. Holy mother frickin' ball shit. He was murdered. Hold up. Pause, y'all. Pause, pause, pause. We are going to look. I have to look at this up. What happened? What happened? Vinnie Paul was his brother? Gunshot wounds. Wow. Sorry, y'all. We'll get back to it. We'll get back to it. You can skip if you want, but I'm here to... You're hearing this with me. December 8th, 2004. Oh, right before Christmas. Damage clan was playing at the Al Rosa Villa nightclub in Columbus, Ohio. Nathan Gale, a fan, rushed onto the stage as the band played the first song of its set list <sighs> and shot Abbott multiple times with a Beretta, a 9mm semi-automatic pistol. The band's head of security then tackled Gale, but was fatally shot in the ensuing struggle. A fan, Nathan Bray, was also killed. As was Aaron Hawk, an employee of the venue who tried to disarm Gale. Holy crap! I didn't realize this was a Dark Mysteries episode, too. Oh my god, this took such a dark turn. Wow, he really took the lives of so many people that night. Who tried to disarm Gail while he was reloading. Three others were wounded before police got there. And shot Gail once in the head. That's really sad. Oh, and Corley, Corey Taylor went to his funeral. Oh, so did Eddie Van Halen. Wow. Oh, sorry, y'all. That took a really dark turn, but I was curious. Dimebag Daryl, may you rest in peace. I hope that you are. Thank you for your contribution to Pantera. Holy crap. Guys, uh, you have to prepare me, okay? I found out on my own what happened to Cannibal Corpse's, I think it was his bass player. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. So, we're gonna move on. Rest in peace, Dimebag Daryl. You will be missed. Um, absolutely. Jesus. Okay, so the next song I have on here, I really, really wanted to uh, listen to what this title track was from Cowboys from Hell. So we're going to listen to Cowboys from Hell off of their record, Cowboys from Hell. Ooh, this is sick. Ooh, this is already really sick. Getting some Red Hot Chili Pepper vibes. Ooh. That was so nice in the headphones. It was like just the guitar. Super close. And then they filled it out here. Mm. Nice. So much jumping into the crowd. Ooh. Pre-chorus. Oh, super ZZ Top. Mmm. I fuck with all of this. Y'all don't understand. Okay. Like, I understand that this is considered thrash metal. But, like, old me would have been like, oh, this is just 80s rock. <laughs> I'm di I love this sort of music. This is totally something I'm into. Super into this. Uh... Yeah, it's 80s music, dude. Hair metal, 
glam metal. You know, thrashing around. This is shit that you vibe to in the summertime. This is shit you blast with some incense going as you're cleaning your house, you know? Wow, they were in sync with their hair thrashing. He's got a really good voice. Ooh. I really liked that line. So we're out of the darkness and into the light. I can't do it, but he... Mmm. I'm getting so many different bands. So many different bands. Oh. I love this build up. Oh, I love it. There's an extreme lack of cowboy hats for this song. Oh, give me this solo. Ew. Uh, dime bag. Wow. Such talent. Why would you take that away? Oh, this fucking slaps, dude. I'm overwhelmed. I'm just karate chopping the air right now. I'm really digging with what I'm here. I'm still, I'm not even listening to the song right now. I paused it. And I'm still karate chopping the air. And I bet you when I press play, I'll be on time. Yep. Look at all these people jumping to the crowd. I could never do that. Crowd surf? I can't even swim. Oh. Nice. It's kind of the same uh, guitar melody as uh, Welcome to the Jungle. That song, I think it's like the verse. Something like that. Wow, my hair is in a bun. I should be thrashing with it down. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Oh, look at him. Ugh. Oh my god, y'all. I'm actually really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying this. not even metal in my opinion. It's just rack. It's just my kind of music. This is what I'm familiar with. I never knew that I was a closeted metal head listening to old thrash. Old thrash metal. Holy mother crap dogs. Ugh. Dimebag Daryl. Everybody's talking about Dimebag Daryl. I'm really sad. Uh, but I'm also really happy I'm listening to them. Holy crap. Ugh. I paused on a commercial with a mozzarella stick and it's really making me hungry. Um, Cowboys from Hell is a really good song. Um, yeah. His voice is so good. Uh, what are the lyrics? Hold on. Severe lack of cowboy hats though, I have to say. Oh, that's the tattoo. What does it mean? Oh, he got Cowboys from Hell tattooed on his. Is brazen personal anthem meant to broadcast Pantera's Texas origin with the unabashed usage of cliched Western themes and parlance. This title's abbreviation CFH was widely used on band merchandise and advertising materials long after succeeding albums had been released, as well as tattooed notably on the left side of the frontman, Phil Ansel Moe's head. Okay, so it was the drummer, not the singer, that Dimebag Daryl was, I think, the brother with the drummer? Correct? Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and the drummer, oh, it's so sad, and then the drummer and the guitarist are both gone. I think that's the situation with the band. I'm just here to understand where we're at with musicians. Um, cause that shit hurts me too. When Aretha Franklin died, I bawled. I was depressed for like a week. You know, I know that we don't do soul on this channel, but I am a huge Aretha Franklin fan. And when she died, I was so sad. Uh, 
Oh, wow. This video turned, like, dark. I'm going to cry. I'm just going to yawn it out, you know? I'm going to cry, but I'm going to pretend it was yawn. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, my God. Y'all, I was not prepared. Under the lights we are, where we stand tall, nobody touches us at all. Showdown, shootout. Spread fear within, without. Ooh, I like that line. I say we're going to take what's ours to have. Spread the word throughout the land. They say the bad guys were black. We're tagged. We can't turn back. Oof. They actually have some really good lyrics. Oh, pillage the village, trash the scene, but better not take it out on me because the ghost town is found. Yeah, I fuck with this song. I absolutely fuck with this song. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we are moving on to our next record. Uh, this is going to be Vulgar, the Vulgar album. I'm going to do the song Walk off Vulgar Display of Power. So this came out two years after um, Cowboys from Hell. So you have to tell me what the sitch is with their discography. Um, is it worth listening to any other stuff in the 80s? I'm probably just going to listen to it anyways because I like what I hear. But like what's the, what's the sitch? And is anything post like 2000, were they still listening to songs or recording songs I mean? Um, and releasing music and is it worth checking out their discography after 2000 or should I just stick with like just what's in the 90s and maybe some of the 80s or just the 90s like it could be that the 80s stuff is pure trash and tell cowboys uh, from hell um, but I don't know so let me know let me know uh, let's go into walk now Another music video, how can this be in 4K? It was uploaded 12 years ago. Ugh. All these videos are from old YouTube. Uh, okay, here we go. Ooh. That guitarist meaty. Ooh. Definitely more like grungy 90s is what I'm hearing. It's definitely a little bit different than the first the, the first album we listened to. Coming out of the 80s, like, you're not going to hear much of a record change in the 90s. Like, in 1990, typically, like, when you're changing decades with music, you usually hear, like, the same, that sort of sound from the previous decade linger for, like, one to two years before the new trend kind of, you know, before you start hearing the real trend. So 1990 is still, um, in my opinion, a little too early to hear the full transition between 80s and 90s music. But this, I feel like, you know, two years later, you're definitely hearing, I'm definitely hearing more grungy sort of Nirvana vibes, less of like the classic like 80s echoey drums, you know? those classic 80s drums <laughs> so I like it Ooh. wow I'm gonna listen to that again hold on what an interesting vocal thing he did It's like it wants to be a guttural, but like he either wasn't, like didn't have the vocal capabilities to do the deep guttural or didn't know how, or I don't know, he, that's not really what he was aiming for. Now correct me if I'm wrong, I'm just assuming here. Uh, it was very interesting though. I liked it. It was like singing mixed with this like weird guttural thing, but also with some punk vocal style to it. Um, definitely different. Okay. Ooh. Respect. I like the callback. Okay. 
Okay, so he has some harmonies in that part. Oh no, it's not the right note. But he had some like harmonies layered to it and then he was also doing the guttural. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna be honest and say I'm, I'm wanting a little bit more from this song. Just a little bit. It's a little dry, a little bare bones for my taste. You know? I'm a melody kind of person though. You know? So I haven't heard anything yet. There's a few things that I'm like trying to linger on. All I need is like one really good, one really good part. It doesn't take me too much to like get sold. So I'm waiting to hear something that's gonna latch me to it. You know? I'm hoping that there's like some delicious breakdown or guitar part or something because it's a little dry. It's a little dry. But let's continue. <laughs> I like this callback thing. It's a really good way to to interact with the crowd. I've mentioned this a few times on my channel. I love crowd reaction, callback, stuff like that. It just makes the live experience when you're seeing these bands so much fucking better. The Ray, you know, and then they can do it. Specs, walk, what did you say? You know, like that stuff is, it's money. Walk. I'm glad that they're keeping this going. I like it. Up. <laughs> Ew. Guitar solo. What is he playing? Ooh. Whoa, what is that that he was doing? Did you see that? He was like letting it ring out down here, plucking the string. And then kind of like playing it and sliding his finger down, letting that shit ring out. Please tell me you know what kind of guitar he's playing. I'm trying to catch like any sort of brand or like anything to notice. It's not a PRS. Is it? Or Gibson? I don't know. It sounds really good. Wow. Oh! That was so nice, that little, like, flat note a little bit. Walk on home, boy. We're talking about, like, almost a fist fight or something happening. Wow, this strobe lighting section is cool. Do they just let it fill out? I'm scared I don't want to put this in for my epilepsy people. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to let the rest of it ring out in case any of y'all have epilepsy. Um, I just don't want to trigger that response from any of y'all. Uh, wow. Can't you see I'm easily bothered by persistence one step from lashing out at you? You want in to get under my skin and call yourself a friend. I've got more friends like you. What do I do? What do we think about vulgar... What is this? Vulgar Display of Power. What do we think about this album? Tell me what you think about all of these albums that we have in this mix. I'm very curious. Um, what did we think about Walk when it first came out? Did it blow your mind? Was it like, meh? Like, also tell me, what did you think about Vulgar... I keep forgetting the name. Vulgar Display of Power after... Um, you know, having two years of Cowboys from Hell, did it meet your expectations or not? You know, what do we, what do we think? Did it meet your expectations during the time? Walk's signature guitar riff is played in the unusual time signature of 12-8. Oh, cool. The blue tinted image of Pantera frontman Phil Anselmo featured on the single's album cover is taken from the music video and endures as one of their most recognizable and celebrated songs. Wow. I do like the respect. What did you say? Phil said, we basically conquered the Dallas Fort Worth local scene in Texas. Eventually Pantera got signed to a major label and we went out and did some touring. When we came home, our friends started treating us a little different because they thought it had gone to our heads. 
like we've got this rock star thing embroidered across our faces but I felt like I was always the same guy when I wrote walk I had just a handful of those people in mind Ooh, interesting and basically my message is take your fucking attitude and take a fucking walk with that keep that shit away from me at the time I took it to heart big time I was just defending my own unrock starism or whatever the fuck you want to put it or however the fuck you want to put it interesting ooh that makes me like this song a lot more I feel like I just need to give this one a few more listens and ideally like honestly what changes my opinion for songs is like being in my car with the windows down hot weather no AC this song blasting I mentioned listening to music in my car all the time, but it's like one of my favorite things to do is to just be on the road and listen to music. So I feel like this is going to just sound better on the road, you know? You know? Because I really like the respect walk and I liked the message behind it. So, you know, walk, we're going to give you a second chance, okay? Like I said, it takes a lot for me to not like a song. And you'll I'll make it pretty damn obvious if I don't like it. So we haven't come across that road yet, though. We have not come across that road. Oh my god. Please. So we did walk. That is our only song off of Is it our only song off of? vulgar it is so now we're moving forward <laughs> and we are going to far beyond driven album and we are going to do this song becoming let me just bring it up here so this came out in 94 by east west records okay so they're doing Wow, Pantera's fastest selling album. It peaked at number one on the Billboard 200 and was certified platinum by the RIAA. Wow, okay, so we, they, yeah, so they're definitely mainstream. Hardcore punk alternative. Okay, so now we're going more like punk and metal. This person said, my favorite Pantera album, it's heavier and groovier than Vulgar Display of Power which at the time was hard and impossible looking feature. Ooh, okay. They have such a massive discography. They really do. Like, it's gonna take me so long to get through their discography. <laughs> because like, hey, they were formed in 81. That's when like their first record came out, I think. And so at this point, like we're in 1994. So like they've been in business for 14 13 years oh my gosh so yeah and they have seven albums that's pretty good three of those being just within four years wow okay so not a music video for this so we are just going to go ahead and get right into the song after this ad oh wow Each album is getting a little bit more classic metal. We had so much 80s influence in the first one. Second one felt a little bit more like punky. And I'm getting like, already off the bat, I'm getting like more metal metal. Oh, well, this guitar is relentless. There's so much going on. That guitar. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Oh my gosh, the chorus. The halftime. Just super, like, open for you to breathe. And then this, like, this like little weird high pitched like tone is that uh, she's there you know she's just holding down the fort and then they got a little bit of double bass they got a little bit of double bass they're getting in there you know I don't know if uh, the other two 
albums that we listened to had that sort of aspect. Um, probably not so much in Cowboys from Hell. This drum sounds so good. Oh. Oh, he said a bad word. Oh, God. Just such a meaty chorus. Burn, 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 burn. Like, mmm. I don't know what chords those are exactly, but they sound major. And, uh, it sounds delicious. Like, I play very, very, very basic guitar chords. And I don't really... I'm not a guitarist. I'm more of a singer, vocalist. That's why I have two guitarists in my band because it's like, oh, bestie, I just have basic chords so I can write lyrics and do melodies and sing. That is what I'm good at, you know? So it's like, I, I, I recognize the tone of the note that he's playing, the burn, 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 or whatever that note is. I recognize it. I just don't know what the the actual chord is. I'm not musically trained. I don't know anything about music theory. Um, so if you know stuff about music theory though, please leave your comments down below. You know, I accept all comments from people who know stuff about music theory and otherwise, you know, so let's continue. Oh, with the cymbal taps. That's delicious. Ooh. Wow. Oh, this is so Rage Against the Machine. Wow. What an amazing way to come out of that. I love that they, like, flirted. They kind of faded up his guitars. Like, and then he just, like, has this, like, weird guitar solo that sounds really good, but also, like, very, I don't know, <laughs> strange, but in a good way, strange. Oh, and they have these hits. Burr, 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 burr. They're really good at, like, their stops. All, all the songs that we've heard have really good, solid, clean breaks. And then they just jump right in and then they have these solid breaks. It's just, it's nice. It's a nice way to layer it. This has a really good flow to it. What is double bass? Ooh, a little bit of a, oh, just with the drum outro. I like how he gave me a baby like, <laughs> oh my gosh. My throat, oh. my allergies. Uh, are y'all also struggling with allergies? Please let me know. Okay, what is this about? Also, who's like the, is Phil the main writer in the band? Is he like, did he co-write with anybody else? Or was he just like the sole writer? When Phil wrote the lyrics for Becoming, Pantera had reached its peak. Heavy metal bands around them were starting to release more commercial sellout albums. That's genius's words, not mine. But Pantera was only getting heavier with each release. Becoming is about Pantera's arrival and relevance to the metal scene. The most popular heavy metal bands in the world at the time were, in my estimate, and definitely all of our estimates, playing the game. They had reached this pinnacle, now they were kind of tapering off and writing more commercial stuff. Whereas we realized our strong point, once again, was sticking to heavy metal and making it as heavy as our style would allow. Therefore, with becoming, it is what it, it, it says. We were becoming. Honestly, we had arrived. Very interesting take. I wonder who they're talking about. Okay, so do you agree with what Genius is saying? Because I need some context here. I need to know, like, some history and stuff. Because I'm here to learn everything I can about this genre. And everything that y'all are willing to give me uh, for the genre. Um, 
what kind of metal bands, popular metal bands during this time were selling out? I'm assuming would like is Metallica one of those? Like who else? I don't even really know. You have to tell me. Um, it's really interesting that they're saying their albums only got heavier. Ooh. What are y'all doing? Every time I hear a noise. Coda is eight months old now. She's doing so much better. But when I can't see her and I can't hear her, mm, trouble's on the way. Eight month old puppies are up to no good, okay? Up to no good. All right, so now we are continuing in Far Beyond Drive and going with another highly requested song, Five Minutes Alone. Ooh. Ooh. Definitely can hear like heavier tones. Love the close up of the guitar. Wow. Little baby, like guttural sort of tone. He's flirting with it. He's definitely flirting with it. Oh, I love this guitar solo thing. Riff. Super catchy. Oh my gosh. Did you see his beard? Did he have it dyed red? It's in like a weird little shape too. Ooh. I like that little vocal effect he has. It's also giving me, um, I know who it's giving me, Pearl Jam. I saw them live. I saw them live at ACL a few years ago. Um, giving me the same vibes. Is Pearl Jam considered metal? Hold on. Another intermission. Hold on. Alternative rock, grunge, hard rock. Okay, so not metal. Right around. God, this riff. Oh, man, I'm uh, He's flirting with it. He's flirting with the, uh, the metal stuff. I dig it. Ooh, that was a nice switch up. What a different vibe. Oh my God. Oh my frickin' jeez. Wow. We're going through like eight different chapters with this guitar solo. Holy cow, that was such a different vibe than what we were hearing. Holy crap oles. I love all of the like close-up of, of the guitar. Oh my gosh, that must have been such a bitch to film though. <laughs> Oh my god, that hair flip. Interesting vocals. He's flirting with some goblin noise. Makes you want to like slow twerk. Be fading. Oh, I was vibing with that riff. I was vibing with it. <laughs> Ooh. So at this point, it's 94. Oh. So they released this album, which is called Far Beyond Drive. This was four years before Death released my favorite album, The Sound of Perseverance. So they have no... Oh, man. Oh, damn. Oh, shit. That's why. That's why. The perfection of the sound of perseverance is just nuts. Oh my gosh, and then literally the next down. So we have this Pantera record, and then literally the next year, Death releases Symbolic. 
So we had spiritual healing, human, and individual thought. I know there's another word for it. Patterns, yeah. <clears throat> so they had released also three records too. So I'm only comparing them because obviously Death had like lots of like. It, you go see my metal reaction for that. <laughs> Just that band. I'm only comparing it because I can hear that Phil is experimenting with those heavier sounds. It's obvious. He's doing a few more gutturals and a few more, like, kind of goblin stuff. Um, definitely have completely lost the sort of 80s um, drum sound now. And it's not as punky. It's definitely more hard rock, tasting some metal stuff. Um, I mean, it's still metal. It's, um just I guess not what I'm like used to with everything that we've listened to so far um so based on all of the listening history that I've had on this channel I would say so far Pantera is definitely softer metal which makes sense because it's considered thrash metal which is you know older school metal like the foundations the base foundation for metal you know and I, obviously it's like there's so many different genres so I'm, and I'm still learning how all of that works but if thrash metal is old school metal then we could say that they like are sort of a base foundation for other genres of metal to kind of feed off of and get inspiration from so the only reason why I'm comparing Pantera to death is just because of oh, the talent the talent of Chuck Schuld I keep forgetting his name Schuldenier his goblin screams and his vocals and it's just everything this is not a death reaction this is a Pantera reaction but I can hear the influence you know, the influence. Um, I'm wondering if the reason why it's not his gutturals and his goblin noises aren't as defined yet is because at the time he was exploring those options and he also didn't really know how to do those properly or maybe he didn't really have the vocal capability to do those deeper gutturals or those higher goblin screams or maybe he was learning how to do it and kind of figuring out like his it's not a range y'all said the vocal the ability for those sounds is not a range but I'm just going to call it a range and say he didn't have the the range the, the you know, maybe he was working on it or something like that. I don't know. Um, I'm not going to think too much on it. I'm not, I know I'm like talking about so many different things, but um, I just hear so many different influences. And it's interesting to see the history. It's interesting to compare based on other albums that we've listened to, like putting myself into the mind frame of like where Phil and those guys were probably at at that time in terms of what was being released around them um like what their competition was releasing <sighs> trying to make an out trying to make an album after oh my gosh after the sound of perseverance you've got to be sharding my nuts Floods, that's the next song, off of Southern Trend Kill, I think is what it's called. The Great Southern Trend Kill. This was released, okay, I'm going to make some of you feel so old and some of you feel like, oh, she's my age. I was born in 1996 in July, just so you know, uh, July 12th to be exact. When was this released? Wait. The Great Southern Trend Kill. Was this released on the 12th? No, it was released on May 7th. Okay. Damn. Okay. Great. 
So thrash metal, sludge metal, and southern rock with heavy metal and thrash metal. What is sludge metal? Please tell me. What is sludge metal? Is that different than thrash? I'm so confused. Okay. Floods. Oh. Oh, this is so like Nirvana already. Oh, what are we listening to right now? Oh my gosh, there are so many things. Nirvana, some southern twang, that like country note. We're listening this to this all the way from the beginning. The bueno and very twangy, twangy guitar. Such a different sound than what was before. I feel like this would be like Red Dead Redemption type song. Give me the twang. God. And the, you know what's interesting too is if we're we're going back to to okay everything that we've listened to the time frame. Slipknot's first record came out in 1999. Their self-titled album. This definitely has older Slipknot sort of vibes. So we could say that Slipknot got some inspiration from Pantera. Wow, my mind is like blown on the holy freaking shit. You're telling me that in 1998 The Sound of Perseverance came out and the next year Slipknot came out. Holy gosh. Ah, I really was born in the wrong generation. You had all these amazing Pantera albums, all these amazing death albums, then Slipknot just fucking whams you in the face, but you had like Morbid Angel releasing stuff, you had Cannibal Corpse releasing shit. Honestly, just, just play the damn song. I like the, the echo. Super distorted. Oh. oh, what is he doing with his vocals there? A lot of interesting vocal stuff happening. I want more of this southern twanginess. I love this high pitched singing though. I love what he's doing with his voice there. He's like purposely making it like kind of crack. You know, and paired with this like tremolo filter reverb thing that he's got going on, sounds really, really cool. Really love the like echo. It's definitely a little slower. Definitely slower. Wow, what a harmony. It, like almost didn't work for like a second. Whoa, what a total change. I was like, oh man, this is going to be a slow burner. Wow, they really changed that up, didn't they? It's still got that slow tempo, but they're like, they're like slamming that shit. Little bit of double bass in there. Oh, this is like headbanging shit. Thunder. Ooh. Ooh, he's got some good harmonies on this solo. Oh man. He's taking us up there. Wow. Damn. I love this outro. I feel like this would be so good live. Oh, I fuck with this part. Talk about guitar solos getting in your feels. Oh my gosh, this sounds so good.
with the rain? Why don't you have more of that guitar solo? Oh, I hate when artists do that. They like tease this like amazing little thing for a song and then they don't give you more. Ugh. That's how they get you re-listening to songs over and over and over again. Oh my god. There were so many different elements. It was definitely a slow burn, but there were some really good parts. There was like this southern twangy guitar riff that he was doing and it was just like this bright twangy sound. And I wanted more of that and they kind of gave it to us a little bit and then there was like this like half time almost like breakdown that sounded super death-esque and then sort of these Nirvana Pearl Jam vocals like very very different sound but I really really loved that ending guitar solo oh my gosh Hold on, let's look at these lyrics real quick. A dead issue, don't wrestle with it. Deaf ears are sleeping, a guilty bliss, so inviting, nailed to the cross. All of the comments that I'm reading about Pantera is, this is definitely like a starter metal band, I think. Definitely one of the like OGs, correct me if I'm wrong. Third single off of this album features one of Metal's most famous guitar solos of all time. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to do more research on my own time outside of this video with Pantera because I'm missing, it's all going over my head because apparently this is one of the most like famous OG like thrash metal bands that really set the foundation, set the tone for a lot of metal in later years and generations. The lyrics are about a flood that comes along and ends all of mankind. It's an allusion to the biblical flood, flood from the book of Genesis, which is part of Noah's arcs. God was essentially disappointed with his creations and wanted to start fresh. And Selmo equates the great flood with modern times questioning if mankind deserves another reckoning for its sins damn i'm gonna have to give this one another we listen to damn y'all are gonna have to let me know what your thoughts are on pandama like pandama <laughs> y'all are gonna have to let me know what your thoughts are on pantera um and where you stand with them would you consider them some of the OGs, have you seen them live? What's your favorite album? What's your least favorite record? Um, you know, you already know the gist. So yesterday don't mean shit. This is our last song off of the last record I have, which is Reinventing the Steel. Um, I just gave it like a short little name. Hold on. Uh, I already forgot the title. Yesterday don't mean shit. Yesterday don't mean shit. Off of Reinventing the Steel. So this was in 2000. So this is six years later. This is tucked right in between Slipknot's first two CDs and two years after The Sound of Perseverance. Ooh. Oh, more double bass. Whoa! Wow, they just opened that up, didn't they? Definitely giving me some more screams. Definitely more heavier. This is the sort of, like, metal that we're used to on the channel so far, based on my experience. Um... He's exploring his range a little bit more, his vocal ability with this. And I could tell that just where the drums and the guitars and everything is going, that it's definitely getting heavier. I can definitely hear just continuing to get heavier. Um, I'm really glad that I listened to all of these like in order 
because I don't think it would have clicked otherwise. Um, I think it's so interesting that they just continue to do to get heavier. And I love that this like chorus just feels a lot more like open. Whatever he's doing on the drums. Yeah, good scream. Kind of like a barracuda sort of guitar riff. Dude, this is like also very Rage Against the Machine. Yes, he's getting it. Damn. Wow, and then he mixes in some singing in there. They'll tell you all about you. And it's like his scream. I love that he like brings it up. Sound more like a cat, but you get the point. He's definitely getting it, practiced it, starting to like perfect it for his own vocal ability, and uh, getting a lot of it different different sounds. I really like this song. And I like that he's singing. Oh! Wow! God! Very, very rage against the machine. Yesterday don't mean jack shit. <laughs> That's how it ends. Ooh, it ends with like the guitar, like taking his pick and just going. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my God. Okay, we're not there yet. It's almost midnight here, y'all. This is how I dedicated I am to the project, you know. This is how dedicated I am to providing content for y'all, but also I just want us to like listen to more music together. Uh, yesterday don't mean shit. Don't mean lyrics. <clears throat> There's nothing special about it. It's either there when you're born or not. Gifted with talent or no big deal. Welcome to the death of a century. Ugh. Oh, it, it's because it was also released in 2000. Maybe Death of a Century could be referencing how a bunch of people thought they, the world was going to end um, in the year 2000. Because yesterday don't mean shit. What's over is over and nothing between. Yeah, maybe if this is like, because so many people thought for sure the world was going to end. In 1999, right before 2000, and it seems like this is kind of one of those like positive messages of like, don't worry about the past, just focus on right now, you know, no rewinding time. Yes, it don't mean shit. There are no notes, but that's what I'm. That's what I'm. Uh, you know, hypothesizing. So, whew, what did we think about Pantera, y'all? What did we think about it? What did I think about it? Okay, so I will say, um, I can tell that this is one, oh God, uh, of those bands. I'm gonna want a full, like, I want you to tell me everything. Tell me all the stuff, tell me everything. I need to know more about this band, what's the sitch, uh, they have a massive discography, I have a lot of content, uh, just content, discography, albums, I have a lot of albums I need to get through with this band. Is the 80s stuff like worth it? Is the stuff like pre-1990 worth taking a listen to? I'm very curious, I think, I think I'm going to, and um, yeah. You have to let me know what your favorite Pantera record is. And 
also what your least favorite is because I'm very curious. And if you've seen them live, let me know. Um, obviously, that would have had to have been ages ago with the original bandmates, but you can still let me know. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. Pantera, y'all. I think my favorite songs were definitely Cowboys from Hell, Cemetery Gates, and I really liked Becoming and Domination. I liked a lot of them. I liked a lot of them. I want to do more of a listen to though. So anyway, that is my full reaction to Pantera. Thank you guys so much for participating in last week's poll and for all the support that you guys have shown on the channel. I really, really appreciate every single one of you and I am so grateful that you are here to help educate me in metal and you've opened me up to your community and I am so appreciative and I just want to learn like everything that you're willing to share <laughs> in terms of metal like anything everything I want to know history I want to know instruments I want to know albums like best and worst weird shit new shit old shit I really want to get more into some like godfathers some more older school metal so we can start there we have listened to a lot more newer metal with Slipknot, Lorna Shore, Slaughter to Prevail. So I want to continue, you know, listening to more modern stuff, but I do want to listen to, you know, some of the founding fathers of metal, as well as like metal from other areas, because I know that there's some like Swedish metal that's like apparently really freaking good. There's some metal with some female backup, but there's some metal with female lead singers, which I'm really interested in checking out. Um, I know Nightwish is one of those bands, but I think a few of y'all have said there's a lot of reactions to that on the channel. And um, look, I'm here to experience music, okay? I want to provide great listening parties for y'all. And I want really good bands that we can all just kind of vibe and talk and learn and just be people who love metal, you know? So that's really my biggest concern. Um, and with that, I'm going to leave you just for a minute. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, night. If you're still here... Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, let me know down in the comments stuff about Pantera. You already know. Like, share with a friend. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please feel free to do so. And um, I'll see you next time. Bye, you guys.